They don't like it up themselves. So, I mean, you've already seen Maureen was, was taking notes and, um, you know, asking questions and we were chatting with Maureen earlier on. And um, obviously it's lovely to, to know that she's here. And I will say this, and I've mentioned this on camera earlier on, but um, from a very young age, um, I, I always thought you, you, uh, you always had a really nice presence on the screen. And I, I always used to say this to my dad, and, and I will mention this as well, because even though my dad's not, uh, not watching, today's a very significant day for my dad and for my family, but even though my dad's not watching, but probably will watch the repeat of this, I'll get him to watch the repeat of this. Why is it a significant day? Oh, I, uh, just very quickly, I lost, we, we, um, he lost his, I lost my mum last year in October, and today would have been her 72nd birthday. Oh. So it is quite a significant day for me today, and so it's a very quiet, subdued day, but at the same time, it couldn't be made better, really, because my dad's favourite com comedic actress was Joyce Grenfell, and of course, you know, I'm sitting here talking to the number one Joyce Grenfell impersonator, if you want to see that. <laughs> my name Joe Cartwright, like in Bonanza. Oh, Joe yeah, Cartwright. Yeah, so I'm Joe Jr. Well, Joe Cartwright, you know, I do certainly <laughs> wish you um, a, a long life, and I'm very sorry to hear about um, your, your late wife, and I hope that your life is, is really um, coming t together now, because it takes about three years, you know that. Anyway. That's about it, really. Fantastic. <laughs> fantastic. Maureen. <laughs> oh, brilliant. That was brilliant. Um, yeah, no, fantastic. Thanks for doing that. It's very kind. I really appreciate that. Okay. Um, okay, so it's just a few simple questions, really. Yep. I'm sure you've been asked. You might be get, be asked these again. Um, so when when you, you sort of answered it earlier on, but you know, what really inspired you to take Jack's screenplay on and, 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 and make it? Well, I, you know, I mean, I'd like to say that this is my idea, but it's not. The Stephen Levy from the Charing Cross Theatre um, asked if I would sanction um, a, a stage version of the knowledge. And frankly, I thought, oh, for a film that is about, you know, a, a city the size of London, are you going to do it on a stage? You know? And so I said, well, have it adapted and then let me read it and you know the first thought was both my children are writers yes. and they're, they're stage writers so but they've sort of done it they've had it enough you know particularly Amy she's done a lot of Jack's work ad adapted it for radio and she just wants to be her own person so they found this chap Simon Block and he's a very good writer a very good television and 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 he's done a lovely adaptation and I just read it and I said fine go ahead mm -hmm. and then they came back and they said would you like to direct it yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> because, you know, What did you look, feel you could bring to it? I, it it's not rocket science being a director. You know, many years ago there was a producer but there was never a director and, and I've, I've encountered enough ones in my time uh, to know that um, basically you have to make a nice atmosphere for actors and, 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 and bring out the individual way of working of each like football team, mm -hmm. you know, you don't shout at someone who's got who's vulnerable and mm -hmm. this anyway. For me, I had one experience I, went, I did a few of Jack's plays, so I did you know, I knew I knew what he liked and what I didn't like and direct he, directors drove him insane and, and he drove them insane because he was on the set every day of the filming. First one there, thin white face, sitting there looking troubled. And Mike Apted, great film director, he said, you know, the bloody trouble with Jack is that he's always right. And he was always right. But we did a 10-minute play. It was the last thing he wrote before he died about a young man telling his parents at Friday night dinner that he's got testicular cancer. And it was 10 minutes, and I directed it in our kitchen in Roswell Hill. And he said to me afterwards, I've waited all these years for somebody who would actually talk about what was underneath the lines and any actor watching that will know that's all, really all you want from a director is to is to talk about not just the lines but what is underneath them mm -hmm. why you go from that feeling to that feeling and some people some actors just do it but a lot of actors now you know they've only worked in television so they know how to be very naturalistic and they know how to do that right and they know how to say i want to talk to you about something but you know, what they don't do is say, 
Um, I think I'll um, I think I'll shell a bowl of peas at this point. Well, try it is what I say. Try it. Have a go. You know, I think that I uh, I don't think that I would do that. No, I don't think I would say that because that's the script. But I don't think that I would you know, walk out the door and stick my head through the window. I'd like to try wriggling across the floor on my belly. <laughs> I'd try it. Mm. Because that way, you find out what not to do. And that way, you make for interesting and electric theatre. So, let's see. Let's see what happens. You know, I might be... I might, I've done it before. I mean, I've directed mm. before. But this is... Kind of feels a bit special. Because the time is so right for it. It's a, you know, I think you're right. Yeah, I think I think, right. I think the taxi, the, the I, you know, we, we've got there's a there's a, a, a firm, who, a young startup firm who can't afford office space in London, right? And they've hired for three hundred quid a month telephone boxes. That's what our telephone boxes have become. Mm. We don't want that to happen to black cats. No, we no. do not want that iconic <laughs> shape in this city to be reduced to something in a window that used to be, you know, or, 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 I don't even like the adverts on the side, frankly, you know, I like, my, I like, a lot of us do, a lot of us are very yeah. pro-black and yeah. back to black, so, so to speak, and just picking up what you just said there, if, if, uh, if, you should uh, get that Amy Winehouse record, uh, the father used to be a oh, cab driver, oh, listen, Mick, there was, yeah, yeah, Mitch back was, is, yeah, Mitch is a, is a cab driver, but they did do a thing, didn't they, uh, they did a sort well, of, well, uh, well, um, we, we, yeah, yeah, we sort of, company, yeah, yeah that's right, and he, and he called it back to black, and back to black, and, and they right, used yeah. to, yeah, you can't get a lot of promotion, it was weird, I thought, it, it was weird, it's on YouTube, I think, you can probably get it on YouTube, little film, maybe there are a bit yeah, well, you know, I don't want to sound portentous in this because, after all, it's just a play. But um, I think it's great for people to know what what young people are capable of. You know, it's a it's a rite of passage for the Chris, the character that was played by Mick Ford. Yeah. And yeah. and I think that's something that you and I and all our kids have gone through. And they come out of it stronger. We come out of it stronger, and that's really what what it's about. Mm. Well, you say it's just a play. I mean, it, as a screenplay, the effect it had on John and a lot of other cab drivers uh, to actually then go and try and do the knowledge job yeah. was, oh, was, 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 was amazing. It, it, really. it, was, it, was, it was it was a life changing play. It really, yeah. it really was. It, it yeah. was only thanks to that play that it really you know. So it, that, yeah. So that takes me nicely on to the next question, and that is that, and I sort of asked you earlier, earlier, and that is that. The inspiration behind doing it and you directing it and everything is is, is is obviously, you know, Jack's work, what it you know, what you what he brought to it and what he made it. How would it make you feel to know that you could possibly be the inspiration, or as Jack's legacy so to speak, that you could take another set of aspiring or people that are thinking about doing the knowledge and coming and watching it and then going on and, and doing it off of the back of the play, even though it's just a play. You know, I never get in a cab without someone saying, oh, your old man wrote a knowledge, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I, I never do, and I get in a lot of cabs. <laughs> um, uh, so anything that extends his immortality so is great mm -hmm. for me, is great for my family. Mm -hmm. um, but in a sense, he did quite a lot of plays about groups of blokes. Yes. You know, the dustbin men, the firemen, London's burning, and the chain, which is about removal men. And yeah. it, 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 in, in a way, it was for him, it was a vehicle. And this, of course, is, is a metaphor for, you know, yeah. going through life. And there's no greater metaphor, there's no greater metaphor than the vehicle that is the black cat. So, I mean, I. You know, the director is just someone that, 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 who sees it through. But if someone comes along and sees it and thinks, um, you know, I, I could do that, uh, then, you know, it's, it's our job to make that uh, an attractive prospect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, I know that the response has been good. It seems to be the talk of the town at the moment, doesn't yeah. it? Especially in. The cab turn, it's, it's yeah, everybody's it's, talking it's about. Especially since the artwork's been released, and it's a great poster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's a great piece of mm -hmm. artwork, isn't it? It's mm -hmm. brilliant. I mean, I it, think that's how, how is that going to make you feel knowing that, you know, I, I think a large percentage of your 
it's going to be quiet on the streets, I think. It's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, nobody be like, where's all the taxis? Yeah. Bloody yeah. Maureen Lippman. It's going to be you know? the young people yeah. all over yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Back to the 60s in yeah. Yorkshire. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I don't care who comes, you know. I, I don't care what the audience is because every night is different in the theatre. That's the beauty yeah. of, as opposed to film, that is the beauty of theatre is that you say, people always ask me, oh, don't you get fed up doing it night after night? Do you think it's the same? It's different every single night because the audience is different every night. So that's exciting. We might get, in, from our point of view, we're going to get a lot of people in who perhaps might not make the theatre their habit. You know, they might never, you know, not my habit really. I've got a good movie, I'm, yeah. I'm quite happy. Um, so that's good if we get whoever we want a full house and we want it to be um you know people to come out and go back and look at the, the you know it's out there on dvd go back and look at all of jack's work that will thrill me um and also a lot of new faces uh, coming into the theater possibly by default because yeah. you know because they they want to be cabbies or they might i mean the whole thing about cabbies having a bigger hippocampus than anyone else. You know, I mean, this is, this of course, in my business, is not surprising because when you get to my age, you have to start learning pretty early. You know, each new play, every six months, a whole new play. The one I've just done, you have four weeks to do it, to right. learn two and a half hours. And that's, you know, we yeah. have to keep our brains and once that goes, that's it. Mm. Night, Vienna. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's quite a hammer, really. but my, yeah. my son goes to Brit school and he's, he's, been, he's been in a couple of small musicals um, and the amount of time that, that it takes, it consumes you mm. almost, you know, it's, we sort of hardly knew him for three or four months yeah. um, he's, and he's only sort of 16, 17 yeah. years old so I can't imagine what it would be like if, if that's the avenue he, well, which he does want to take. Well, he does, good, well it's been very good to me, yes. I've had a fantastic life. Uh, doing what I wanted to do, and I came from Hull. I'd hardly been to the theatre when I came to London to study. So I can only say to your son, I'm, you know, I wish you luck. Unfortunately, there's a bit rather too many schools of drama, so mm. you know the, the profession is flooded, and and there's no uh, barrier to like there used to be. You have to be a member of Equity, and mm. in order to be a member of Equity, you have to have a job, and um, uh, you know, look, it's not a fair world. And you might well say, with regard to this play, Peter, that, that there is a lot of people out there who could be cab drivers with a bad memory. But they could be very good drivers, and they could, you know, now with Satna, why shouldn't they do it? You know, it's an argument. Oh uh, yeah, I suppose there is an argument you, there. you might lose quite a lot of really competent people who would, who would have a muscle memory. Like, you see, I mean, I've had to dance in my life, and I don't remember the steps. You know, so... But slowly, over time, the steps go in, and then I'm as good as anyone else. Mm. But you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, uh, in the end, the best will rise to the top. Well, I'd like to think that, you know, because we, we consider ourselves to be the best, don't we, John? I hope. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely, yeah, yeah. 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 No, I, I, I'm, regarding the casting, just quickly on, on, mm. on the play, have you cast people already or is that in the process? No, or, no, or? we start in two weeks time. Oh, okay. Um, Was you tempted to, 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 I know you were saying about not a lot of, not a lot of the original cast left, would you, would you not tempted to, to try and get hold of any, like, say, say, like, someone like Mick to come in and play Burgess or anything like that? I did think about that. But he's, a, he's a fine actor. He's a like fine him. actor, and, and but he's a screenwriter as well now. Of course. But in Would a way, uh, it I, it crossed my mind that that would be. He's not. I, he's not perfect casting for it. I don't think. Um, but but he's a bloody good actor. So what the hell? Mm. Um, but actually, I think you have to start again. You know, be like me playing my part. I'm too old. Maybe like Leslie, you know, yeah. a bit mum, good old you know, good old Leslie. Yeah. She's still, she, well, we were at drama school together. Of course. And Jonathan Lynn, who played Ted, um, I spoke to him today because oh, he's wow. in town. And it yeah, actually, we were talking about Jonathan yeah. earlier on. It did yeah. actually yeah. occur to me that I could have asked Johnny if he'd like to play Burgess. He would have been brilliant. Actually, having said that, he would probably make a better Burgess, wouldn't he? In that he sense. would yeah. be brilliant. Yeah. But yeah. you know, the point is that Burgess is in his fifties. He's not in his seventies. Of course. And so you have to, you just have, you know, I've got the, the guy 
uh, playing um, the Mick Ford part is 20, straight out drama school. So in the plot of the play, he would have been on the dole for, since he was 16, mm. which is enough. Mm. But it's younger than Mick was. Um, the same with the girl, very, very raw talent, which I, I liked. Um, uh, Gordon, the uh, Michael Elphick part, yeah. is uh, James Alexander from who uh, grew up on EastEnders. Right, okay. oh. He's a little bit too young for it, but I've told him to grow a paunch. Uh, <laughs> I just, he's got a quality which I think would be, he's very funny and he's lovely. And yep. his girlfriend, Celine Abrahams, she's playing my part. Okay. <laughs> and then I've got Ben Kaplan and Jenna Organ, two great, good actors. They're playing the Jewish couple Ted and Val. And Miss, um, uh, uh, I've worked with Ben, so I know him, and Jenna was in Bad Jews, the play. She's very good. So that I'm not worried about at all. Um, and then, if you remember in the film of The Knowledge, there was a woman who, who, who got through, which she passed through, right. Miss Staveley. And she hardly had a part, but she, yeah. was, she was there. Mm. Well, actually, because we've lost Titanic, you know, who was the David Ryer one who did it all on a push bike and his wife never spoke to him. <laughs> to, to China doll on the That's a lady. Completely mad. Right, right. Yeah, a crinoline lady. That's very Jack. Um, so that that couple have gone from, because there was no way we could sh have right. show him falling off his bike yeah. on stage, you know. So that couple has gone. But Miss Stavely is a bit more of a part and a bit more of a kind of sort of, slightly femme fatale as far as the young man's concerned in his relationship with this. Um, and so, uh, it's different, and therefore, because it's different, it's got to be new. Everybody's got to be new. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. But, we'll but it'll still be set in 1979 to 82, um, and the, the clothes and the colour and the, the, the all that was right and wrong will still be there. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I'm... I'm hoping to, and I'm going to film some cabbies on the 27th talking about their experiences. So I want to play that for people now so that people get the full idea when they come in. They see the cabbies, they hear them talking about the difference between doing it then and now. I've got young cabbies, old cabbies, and um, uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a really fun sure evening. It's going to be I hope great. so. I know I will. Both myself and John, we've talked about it, and yeah. like I say, it's doing the rounds yeah, yeah. In, in the cafes yeah. and, the, and, the, and the places where we eat. I wish we could afford to advertise on taxes, because that would be so ironic, wouldn't it? Well, it would be ironic, yeah. uh, but at the same time, to be honest, Maureen, I don't think you're going to need to. It, no. You're, you're going to... You know, this is this this will build momentum, and, and cab drivers are the greatest for advertising anything, anyway, aren't they? Yeah. Right? We'll talk about it. But we will we will talk about it, and the guys will they you know we, we will um, have this interview if that's okay with you on London Taxi Radio, and the boys will talk about it oh, uh, on London Taxi yeah. Radio. We've no, got I, this I, as the Periscope thing. Absolutely, you've got so behind yeah. us. It's yeah. it's great. It's and, uh, oh, it's great. Listen, anything yeah. that's positive, and I don't know anybody. I've never met anybody who didn't like. What Jack did, no. and that, that, and because it, it just, it yeah. was just so cleverly it was done. Human, humane. Oh, it was brilliant. You know, it was enormous brilliant. Enormous affection. A lot of people, um, you know, do stories about uh, the poor, but uh, and the uh, downtrodden. But Jack did it with such affection, and particularly yeah. on the Jewish themes. Yeah. He, he um, you know, well, he got quite a bit of stick when he did the Mitzvah Boy about kind of opening the door to what goes on. Yeah. Um, but actually, it was all done with love and affection, and that's it. You can, you, you know, you can right stand humor. up and say, and humour. Well, funny. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned funny. Tanya and Kipperbang. Oh, oh and almost oh, my favourite yeah. Tanya, because it's, it, I think, his most romantic. Oh, isn't it weird? Yeah. Yeah. I absolutely. remember when, obviously, when Channel 4 started, and, and I had um, Sir Ian McKellen in my cab, we were on, uh, taking him home, and I spoke to him about Walter because mm. that was one of the first, if mm. not the first, teleplay that mm. I saw on Channel Four. I said, and we were talking about it, and I said, and I think the second one was Tanya and Yeah. Uh, I said, and they're 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 so ingrained in my yeah. in my head because oh. I remember sitting because my dad used to love all that stuff. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Really love yeah. it, and just yeah. sitting watching it, and so the memories of it are really that really strong. Yang was we had a hundred and twenty two titles. Oh, really? <laughs> because everybody said you cannot call a play for Tang Yang Kipper Bank. It's brilliant. Isn't it great? It's great. And hey. in the end, it was called for Tang Yang Kipper Bank. But you know what? I'm glad it was because yeah. otherwise it might not have been remembered in the, in the same way. Yeah. Yeah. Because it, it, anybody of sort of like around their sort of late 40s, early 50s, 
when the start for Channel Four and all the rest mm. of it and the little triangle and everything mm. at the top. And I used to warn you. Yeah. yeah. Oh well. Yeah. What can I say? Well. Yeah. <laughs> but um, listen, I, I, I mean, I could sit here and talk to you all day, and um, I'm so glad because because you know my dad's going to be so pleased, especially as he's going to drive <laughs> straight to Canberra. I'm so pleased. I'm here. Yeah. 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 It's, 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 it's absolutely lovely. Really, really, really nice of you to make me feel welcome and. You know, I, to, as, to, I'll tell you something, sitting in here, even doing a mock appearance with the two guys, Abbas and Michelle, as yeah. I did before this, when he started, and she said to him, you're at whatever it was, yeah. Cabot Square, was it, Cabot Place, and you're going to, and that lad, he sat there, he's, he's, he's on um, 28 days, three points, and he sat there, and you see him breathe out, Close his eyes, and then he went into a zone, just like you would if you were an actor. Yeah. Forward, a complace, left, sorry, forward, straight hand, left, right hand, left, right hand, left, right So, and you could see, he was seeing it all. He was seeing it. It's incredible. Yeah, yeah. It's an incredible thing. I, how many street names did he do in that one call? And there are 320 in that first. Yeah. 320 runs. runs. So, so yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, the amount of streets taken in in that. And the amount of streets. I mean, I couldn't believe he must have gone through 100 streets in one quarter. Bear in mind, he had to keep it on the line as well. You know, so he had yeah. to think from one end to the yeah. other. As cab drivers, when we, when if we get, um, Richard tested us out yeah. in, the, in the reception oh, um, about compassing and how how he teaches this sort of compassing where if you're in one particular place to get to another place, how you think about it on a compass. And he actually, you know, as cab drivers, um, when you're doing the knowledge, you won't know as much as mm. you will ever know. Once you're mm. on, say, 21 days, you mm. know so much. Yeah. And then when you get out, it kind of relaxes a bit, yeah, even though you know where you're going. Yeah. And he asked us how to get from, say, here, mm. to, if we were going to Wimbledon, what bridge would we take? And my goodness, the pressure I suddenly felt mm. Was was oh, I got it? You got it right. I got it wrong. Only by one bridge. He's only out by one yeah, bridge. Oh. You see, the interesting thing is where it is allies with with what I do with acting is that it's 1967. I left Lambda, but there's not a single night that I don't go on stage using what I did, yeah. what I right. learnt in that place. Um, yeah. So even if you relax a bit and you you know might forget a few bridges or whatever. It's it's the it's the discipline it taught you. Yeah. And sometimes yeah, you do get in a cab and you know the guy's a bit surly or something or anything like that, you know. Yeah. But but the discipline is there and it, it it makes you absolutely respect the laws of what you're doing. And 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 if you're not trained, and it, it's not the same. Mm. It's an analytical mind. It's a mindset. And you use those basic tenets that you learn in that in that in in that. Well, place. that then becomes you sort of refer back to the foundation, don't yeah. you, of it all, and that's the, that's your safety net, almost, yeah. isn't it? And that's Absolutely. the way we work, and it's exactly the same it's way exactly you work. Exactly the same way. Yeah. And you have to be actors to some extent. I mean, I mean, Sean took a drama course, didn't she? I meet a lot mm -hmm. of taxi drivers who who, who came out of uh, drama schools, and you know, it's like vicars. You have to be an actor because you have to put on a front for for um, different characters, different, different passengers. And like Jack said in, in his play, Ready When You Are, Mr. McGill, um, the guy says, you know, oh, this isn't real life, this is just pretend. And the, the director said, ah, Mr. McGill, real life is how well you pretend. Mm. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, listen, I, I, like I said, I could sit and talk to Maureen all day, and I'm sure she's got somewhere to be. So, um, as Sadler's we all have, Wells. Sadler's Sadler's Wells. Wells. Yeah. I was trying Copenhagen to. Street can fly on the right. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to explain, but I'm, I, I might draw it out for, for, for Maureen. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. <laughs> but um, all it remains for me to say is, thank, thank, thank you so much for, 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 yeah, for coming. Our show. And, oh, listen, wow. I think that goes without saying. <laughs> anybody who's out there, just tell everybody else. And uh, you know what happens in the London taxi trade, it just, it's a viral thing, uh, everybody's going to come, so, you know, expect to see plenty of taxi drivers yeah. there, that's yeah. what I'll say, you know, the sort of jig, as everybody's sitting down, jangling <laughs> the badges, you know, yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I, uh, listen, thanks for, to, for, 
watching this broadcast and if you're watching a recording of this broadcast thanks for watching it as well we appreciate it around the taxi radio we, we always appreciate that thanks to john for holding the camera uh, his arms are aching like crazy because he keeps mm. swapping over and um thank you to maureen Lipper for coming into the knowledge store today well, yes. and it's been yeah. uh, fantastic and my dad is going to absolutely love it <laughs> he really is he really is going to love well, it until, so sorry, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, that's it. Sorry, that's it. thank you very much and uh, we'll see you soon thank you They don't like it up themselves.